All right, guys, we're on our way to town to work on the retaining wall project, get it wrapped up, and we got a little unexpected uh, rain shower here. It's supposed to carry on for the next couple hours, so we're going to switch gears, head in the shop, and uh, see if we can get the old 120 back together. So let's do it. All right, let me get you guys caught up to speed here real quick. First off, I think Mr. Millennial up here is doing a whole bunch of unnecessary work. If you guys remember all the way back to the excavator operation challenge, which was actually the last time this thing was used before the big rebuild, we had some electrical throttle issues that showed up out of nowhere. And uh, I ordered any one of these because I thought that was the problem. And that thing didn't work at all so we got this one working and we had that issue show up just briefly when we used it there so we actually pulled all the things out of here to uh, basically inspect the wiring harness to make sure that mice didn't get into anything had anything chafing everything looks good i believe i ended up ordering a new one of these and pretty sure that's the issue time will tell so Matt's uh, going to get the interior back in. I really wish I could get that seat recovered while I was out, but I don't know if that's going to happen this time either. This thing needs to get all the dirt, man. Oh, it is. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm working get it recovered. on it. Get it recovered. <laughs> oh, time and money, time and money. So anyways, back to this project. This is our final drive project, and we got some new parts in. Now, hindsight being 2020, I've learned a lot doing this, so let me educate you guys a little bit. I bought bearings, I bought seals, I bought O-rings, I bought everything we need to do to basically rebuild all this, and probably spent about $700 doing that. Hindsight being 2020, I could have probably spent $1,200 and bought it all as a kit, and that kit would have also come with the plungers and the swash plate, and new brake disc, and yeah. I would recommend that if you're gonna do it. If I was gonna do this all over again, that's the route I was gonna go, or that's the route I would go. So, so a couple things here as we get ready to start going back together. One, I've already got the bearing and the cap replaced. I ended up making me a bearing puller, uh, just a washer with flat, bolt the flat washer, got it locked underneath there, just kind of worked it, worked it out. It didn't work too bad, I apologize for not getting any video over that. We got the new seal installed down in here. Uh, one thing I purchased about a year or so ago that has been pretty handy is just a generic bearing and seal driver kit. And uh, you can do it with sockets and stuff. I've done it for years, but that actually works pretty well. Worth the 35 or 40 bucks. I think I got it on Amazon. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. It was worth worth the effort on that. So, on the money. The next thing is we got the new shaft, which is finally the right one. Uh, the guy from Florida. Um, Smith tractor parts, I believe it was. Uh, Jeff, I talked to down there. Or was it John? Something with a J. John. John was a John. I knew it started with a J. Uh, he actually, he was actually pretty good to work with. He helped us out quite a bit. This bearing is a little bit goofy. It's got a two part race in it, and the thrust washer part does need to go a certain way, which I believe is down, if I remember right. Holds on the shaft with two snap rings. So it's actually the first thing to go down in there. We'll push it down through the seal. I got a little bit of lubricant on it and just kind of work it in there. Oh, it's easier to do whenever you don't have a camera in your hand. So hold on a second. All right, we got our pump shaft down in there. I'm gonna show you real quick one thing that was quite a bit different on this one. I gotta find out which one. This is the old one right here. And this is the new one for the other side i bought two of them and all the dimensions are the same but if you look right here on the end this one's got a different chamfer on it than this one and the whole purpose of that is to get it through that seal we had a little bit of a fight getting it through that seal and not tearing up that seal so if you guys get a new one like that uh be sure you look at that and don't mess up your seal so the next thing we need to do this is what i call the swash plate so basically the way this thing works is this is going to sit down in the bottom of there and on the bottom of it it'll change angles See how that works right there? And that basically gives you your high speed travel and your low speed travel. And whenever this is down in there, this will get flipped upside down and sit on here. And as hydraulic oil puts pressure on it, it forces this thing to slide down around here and it'll release its pressure. 
that's how you get your turning rotation so this thing will only go in there one way that hole right there has to go on that pin over there so let's see if we can drop this down. oh goodness drop this down in there without smashing our fingers i guess we'll do it a piece at a time just like that locks in and this one here goes just like that make sure i got it right there we go see how that goes back and forth and changes now i'm gonna need both hands for this one so let me grab a hold of that one and we'll slide it down on there all right see if we can get this drop down in there what i don't want to happen is all those plungers come out of there so i'm gonna try to hold on to it as long as i can with my fingers there she goes boom just like that that's where the oil goes in behind those then it'll evacuate over here i'll show you the manifold over there in a minute so the next thing is this ring goes down around there like so and then we got all the brake disc to just spline in there plate and a friction now the plates you'll notice they have the splines or the serrated edges on the outside they lock into the housing oh come on end up in there. there we go and the frictions have it on the inside so once we get all these in there's a piston in there and what this does is whenever it applies pressure to this it's what keeps you from moving while you're digging it's what it's like basically your parking brake i'm putting these in the same order i took them out so hopefully all the wear patterns and all that stuff aligns the same way. One more to go. Then you have your piston. So this has got new O-rings in it. So this is what actually shoves down and holds everything together. It should fit down in that groove there. Just like so. Whoops. Get back here, Ori. She's down in there. And then this big washer here goes right at the top like so. All right, guys, I'm going to voice this section over real life. Mike did not do a very good job explaining this. So there you see you've got three holes in that O-ring. There's the one. That one there is actually for your high-low. And then the two on the other side are actually for your forward or reverse. It depends on which one, uh, which way you're going, which one's pressurized, which one's not. So they have to line up with these. This uh, center ring here, if you look at the holes on one side, there's three of them. The holes on the other side, that's how the oil gets on top of those pistons. It depends on which way you're wanting to travel on which side is pressurized and which side is your uh, return. So basically the point is here, I kind of, this thing does have to be oriented a correct direction. I did put a paint mark on it to line everything up, but just kind of also double checking to uh, make sure we got everything lined up the uh, proper way. There's also a concave washer laying right there on top uh, that has to go a certain way. The concave goes up, the dish goes down, if that makes sense. But uh, kind of double checking, triple checking. We're going to make sure this thing's all lined up. Everything looks good. All the O-rings are in place. We're going to drop this down on there and then get her bolted up. And we'll pretty much have this side... Uh, tidied up.
Well, there she is. We got the uh, hydraulic side all back together. Now we need to get the gear side back together. This is what they call a planetary gear setup. Some people call it a sun gear setup. At the end of the day, what it is is gear reduction. And what happens is this set of gears here, uh, it engages in two places. There's a spline way down in here. This backside engages on. See those splines right there? I believe that is uh, part of the parking brake. That's what holds this stationary so it cannot turn and only the gears turn is what that does, okay? So these gears here engage with this outer sun gear ring. This is actually the final step of reduction. But it's the first piece to go in. So let me slide that in there and then I'll show you how the upper set works. Should have thought this through a little better. Let's take a good way to smash your finger. Come on, baby. There she goes. Boom, just like that. Now, the next item that goes in there is this drive gear right here. So, this drive gear will turn. Gotta get these all lined up here. Hold on. So keep in mind, we're kind of going at this a little bit backwards. So basically, this drive gear turns these gears, which turns that gear out there, which makes this go around, which makes the chain go around. Now keep in mind, take a note, that's hollow, okay? So this, this right here is a gear reduction step. This has less teeth than that, and this has less teeth than that. So actually, you, you, gear, you did gear reduction there twice. Now, what turns this gear? That gear is turned by this set of gears. See how it's splined right there? That'll fit right on top of there. So that's the next step. Let's put that in there. Take note whenever I turn that, watch how much faster these gears turn than the gears down below. Can you see that? That's where you get your gear reduction at. Gives it all the torque and power it needs. Now, there's one last piece to go in here. That's our new drive gear. This is the splines that were stripped out. And if you guys can see all the way down that hole, that's that new shaft we installed in the pump. So this is what turns it all. So that'll slide down in there. There's a thrust washer in there. Get everything lined up just right. It should fall right down in there. There it is. Now look, it's locked up, won't turn no more. So the pump turns that, that turns these, which in turn, Intel turns these, which turns that 
piece down between, which turns the whole kit and caboodle. So the only thing left to do on this is we gotta install the cover and put oil in it and install her back on the machine. Check that out, Matt's got pretty much the inside all back together, old Mr. Millennial. You forgot the format, buddy. You told me to wait for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I did. <laughs> and I've got the file drive back together. They, it isn't it just beautiful and so innocent when it's sitting there. Such a troublemaker the rest of the time. I did go ahead and take a wire brush. I cleaned up all these mating surfaces and ran. I remember how we had took this thing apart. Had a few threads that were a little goofy. Got all that cleaned up, so now it's just as simple as shoving this back in that hole. You just had to say it, didn't you? It's just just that simple. simple. We do got to take this out because it don't fit through the hole with that in there. We probably ought to put a rag in there so we don't get dirt in there, <clears throat> sir. Okay. I will get the rag. Probably go down this shade. Oh yeah, that's the real fun one. So you need to kind of rock it up as you come in. Yeah, I'm just almost not quite as long armed as I think. Uh oh, we're gonna take them caps off there. Uh, we are gonna have to take those caps off there. Yep. Luckily, they're just hanging tight. And the one's just sitting on there, ain't it? Yep. All right. Ready? Take 15. Actually, it's take two. Oh, here we go. Come on over. A little bit of a fight, we got one started, now we just got like, I don't know, 20 more to go. Hey, was there a gasket supposed to go in there? Nope. Okay. Steel on steel, bolt up. Get all these started and we'll be good to roll, folks. Good to roll. Well, it's about time for the moment of truth. Yes. See if you put it back together right. I'm sure if it don't work, it's because the floorboard's not in. The floorboard is in. <laughs> Go look. So, I don't have oil in the planetary over here, but we're not going to move it that far. I just want to make sure it goes forward and backwards, and then you got to get out of here. So, I'm hoping we can, you got just enough time to get this track on there. Let's we'll do finish. It. We'll finish it up without him. So, all right, let's see what happens. Here we go. <laughs> Fire in a hole, you ready? Hey, he did put the floorboard back in, the floor mat back in. Here we go.
without spinning it. Okay. We'll have to get her, whenever I get it all together here, I'll pull her forward and then we'll, we'll rotate. Later. Yep. All right, guys, there it is down there. We got the uh, master pin in. These excavator rails, if you guys remember from Todd from Truck or Track talking, they are uh, dry rails. They don't have like a gator clip like what a dozer would have. A little bit more of a pain in the butt, but uh, it's still not the end of the world. But before I go any farther, I would want to put oil in this final drive before I forget. I think everything's going to be good. I don't want to uh, take a chance of uh, pulling a harebrain move and going out of here without oil in. So let me top this off with oil real quick. And then I think we might tie into that other side. And I think I'm going to, at the very least, I'm going to go ahead and inspect that other side. See what we got going on over there. I do have parts to replace stuff if we need to. And uh, we'll make that call when we get in there and take a look at her. So we top this off and we'll scoot on around. All right, so while I'm sitting here pumping away, putting oil in this thing, this is an excellent opportunity to have a little chat with everybody. I think there was, whenever I had the video out of putting the undercarriage on this thing, for some reason, out of 400 comments, 200 of you thought I put the tracks on backwards, which is amazing. That you can tell that from a video whenever I can't tell that sitting right here in real life. But with that being said, every once in a while you guys do catch me on stuff. And you guys are correct. You're probably right more than I'm right. So purpose of this whole speech is not right. Anyways, I think you know where I'm going with this. But I think there's a little bit of a miss. Whoa, hold on. Calm down. Hold the horse. Hold the horse here. Now I'm talking and not paying attention and I got it over full. But whenever, what we were talking about is, I think there was a misconception between these fins facing towards the back, whenever Todd meant this fin here facing towards the back, right there. This is the rear of the machine, there's the fin facing that way. Now, I have not had the undercarriage back off this thing since it's been in here, that's the way it went on, go check the videos. Come over to the other side and look, there's the fin facing the back. The tracks are on correctly and have been since the day we installed them. And hey, good news, that's full of oil. Well, if you guys remember the mistake I made last time and covered myself in nasty, nasty, horrible smelling gear oil. By golly, we're not gonna make that mistake the second time. We're gonna learn from our lessons. We're gonna take the vent plug out first and then we're gonna take the drain plug out second. Hopefully it don't come shooting out at us. Whoop, missed it a little bit, but a lot better off than what we were last time. Oil still looks pretty good in there though. Still don't smell the greatest. That is some strong stout smelling stuff. Cannot deny that fact. All right, I think we're about bled out. Let's pull the uh, cap off and see what we got behind. Door number two. All right, so everything so far looks pretty good. The uh, the oil looks good, didn't have any metallic metal or anything in it. Uh, no oil, in, or no, no oil, no oil in the oil. That makes a lot of sense, they're perfect. No water in the oil, or no signs of water in the oil, so don't have a whole lot of concerns about anything major as far as bearings or anything, but this shaft right here, this is what I want to uh, look at and inspect the other side. I'm gonna try to get a pick in behind there and see if I can work it out of there. I might have to put you guys down to get it out. Oh, it's coming. Oh, there she comes. There she comes. Let's see what those splines look like on the other end, how much they're wore. Check that out. Can you guys see that? Get the light just right. Look how it's war. See how thick the spine is right there? Then it goes just a paper thin right there. 
If you look over here at this side, this is the new one. It's thick all the way down. Now, the difference between this side and the other side, there's no way I can get you guys up there in a video, so I'm just gonna, you're just gonna take my word for me. Word from me. But the piece that's in the pump, which is this one that come out the other side, I don't know if it's harder steel or what, but it don't seem to have near the wear on it as what uh, this does. So I think for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this piece alone. We're gonna take a shortcut on this one and just slide this new prop shaft in. And that's probably gonna be good to go for this old girl. I can't, uh, I don't see enough wear on that other piece to justify pulling that final drive out of there and uh and tearing it down and rebuilding it or replacing that other shaft so we're going to slide this one in the new one in here on this side i think we're going to call this side good that should get us get us several thousand more hours of service hopefully I feel even more confident in that after putting that in there. That thing has very, very little play in that joint between them two shafts. So I think we caught this one just in time. Thanks to the other side and sound the alarm. But uh, glad I went ahead and pulled this side apart. That was a lot easier fix than uh, what we did on the other side. So get this cover back on here and adjust the tracks. Tidy up a few loose ends and I think she's ready to go again. You ready? You're up. Yeah. You got this? Yeah. All right, go for it. Keep going. You got a long ways to go, boy. You just now start pumping. Here. There you go. It's going in there now. There you go. Picking up speed. Boy, we're getting somewhere. So it starts coming out that hole right there, that's when you know you're full. Okay. Okay. You getting tired yet? You you're doing a good job, Gunner. You're almost there. What happened? Did you get tired on me? Hey, looky there, Gunner. It's full. She's coming out. See it? Yep. I couldn't reach the um, stuff. You know what we got to do next? What? We need to either put the cover back on the final drive or adjust the track. Which one do you want to do? Uh, putting the cover back on. Cover back on. <laughs> Where are you going? You're not going to put this cover on? No. Why not? It's boring. It's boring? Yeah. Well, it's got to be done. Wait. So where are you going? Over there. To do what? To just play. This I don't think you're going to go play. Over here. Stop boring. Look. You see through the crack right there. I think Gunner forgot him a new go-kart. You're going to go sit in and pretend like you're driving, aren't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go have fun while Daddy works. Because you're boring. No, I'm not boring. It's called work.
Think you're gonna go fast in that thing? Yeah. You gonna show everybody how you can reach the pedals in that one? It's almost like it's custom built for you, isn't it? This is how far. You're missing one crucial thing. The motor. The motor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how fast do you think Macy can push you? One mile per hour. How fast do you think the motor will go? Fast. Fast. All right, you gonna help me adjust the track? We got one thing left to do. Yeah. Come on, come help me. Hi. Come on. We got one thing left to do. We can put the old girl back to work for a second time, Gunner. We gotta adjust the track. We gotta pump some grease in her. See if we can see that grease fitting. Can I pump it? Yeah, you see that grease fitting way back in there? Yeah. I gotta try to get this hose on there. And then Here, I... you hold the camera and I'll put the okay. hose on. Ah. You're a lot better helping old Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you know what to do? All right, pull the trigger. Hope it's got grease in it. Pull it all the way back. As hard as you can pull it. Don't suck it's got grease in it. That's never good. I think we got a dead battery again. Hold on, stand by. All right, take two. We got grease and a battery. I'm gonna sit back and watch. You go for it, buddy. You know what you're looking for? Can you see it moving? Do you know when it's tight enough? Huh? Do you know when it's tight enough? Or are you just going to tell me? Wait for me to tell you to stop. I'm afraid you didn't tell me. <laughs> Keep going. we got to get that about an uh, inch and a half, two inches of deflection. Okay, that's going to take care of it. You see how it's raising up? Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, slow down a little bit. A little bit more. Good job. A little bit more. I like that, Gunner. Let's leave it right there. That'll work. That'll work, buddy. Okay, I'm going back. You going back to your go-kart? No, I'm going back to the rolling cart. Well, there she is. Gunner and I got the track all adjusted back up. He left me. He went inside to eat. But we almost forgot. We almost forgot a task. We gotta go up here and fix our light that Todd from Trucker Track, if you guys missed that video, beat the heck out of with the... I haven't had a chance to look at it real close. I don't think he... Don't look like he heard it. Just knocked her loose. You guys that don't know, Todd from Trucker Track, he has a YouTube channel and he does axe handle reviews where he takes a hickory axe handle and just, well, waylays on stuff. And he was nice enough to come by the shop and uh, test out the old light we got here on the new deer. Didn't break the light, but he knocked my mount loose. Somehow, maybe I didn't have it tight enough, I don't know. We'll get her adjusted back down. This light's awesome. I was getting ready to pull it outside and I realized it was dark outside and needed the light. So uh, do that. Let me get this light tightened back up. We're gonna tie you up a few other things and let's track this girl out of here for a second time. All right, guys, the shop is an absolute disaster, but that can only mean one thing, progress. Oh, I'm almost excited, as excited the second time around as what I was the first time around. I present to you for the second time, the 120. Oh, isn't she beautiful? I just, I just hope she moves. Let's pull her outside where she belongs. Look at that. 
boys and girls, I think we're back in business. <laughs> I'm excited. Can you tell? I'm excited. I'm so excited that tomorrow we're going to finish that retaining wall job in town. Full intentions of holding the Volvo in there. I think we're going to take the old 120 with us, so we'll see how long she lasts this time. Guys, like I said, it, uh, I left here the first time. It could lose a final drive, it could lose an engine, it could lose a pump. I don't care. That machine has been so good to me and so reliable for all the years that um, it deserves to have a breakdown a time or two. And that wasn't, uh, honestly, it took me longer to get parts in than to fix it. It wasn't a huge deal. So hope you guys enjoyed the shop video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. And hopefully, it's with that girl on the job. What do you think, Maggie? You gonna sweep the shop for me? Come here, girl. What's wrong, huh? You're not feeling good, are you? You went to the vet today. So yeah, I went to the vet. He wasn't nice to me. You're a good girl. You gonna sweep the floor? Tell him bye. <laughs> you goofball.